Welcome everybody to our weekly three minute therapy podcast. And our is me, Dr. Michael Edelstein, clinical psychologist, and Mick Berry, my partner in crime, also REBT expert. And we uh, base our podcast on REBT, Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, formulated by Albert Ellis in the 1950s, <laughs> uh, which created a revolution in the psychotherapy movement from the old psychoanalytic idea of your emotional problems as an adult comes from your childhood to the much more current, reasonable, empirical idea that our emotional problems come from our thinking, because all our emotions come from thinking, not from situations themselves. And when we have emotional problems, they come from three main demands. I must do well and get approval, which creates anxiety, guilt, shame, embarrassment. You must treat me well. And that causes hostility, resentment, and anger. And my life must go well. And that causes depression, uh, procrastination, and addictions. Vic, did you want to add anything to that introduction? No, that sounds good to me. And today we're going to be discussing um, Alcoholics Anonymous as REBT looks at it. And uh, let's start with some positives of Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, I think Alcoholics Anonymous has a few positives. One is that you have a sponsor in Alcoholics Anonymous. And if your goal is not to drink, if you have the urge to drink, then you call your sponsor and your sponsor presumably talks some rationality into you. And uh, another uh, positive of Alcoholics Anonymous is that um, you look at some of your thinking they have a term, stinking thinking, and uh, they do assume uh, in many ways it's your thinking that causes your drinking and not your, um, and not your urge, that you're thinking about it. Mick? Yeah, I wanted to say another positive is take what you like and leave the rest. So if you go to an AA meeting, take what you like and leave the rest. There's bound to be something that you're going to find useful. And if you find a lot not useful, then you don't pay attention to it. And another positive is that it's worldwide and you can pretty much go to any city in the country, in the world. I don't know how it is across Europe and Asia, but there in this country, you could go to pretty much any city, any time of day, and there'll be an AA meeting that you can go to, and there'll be many people you can bounce your ideas off of that will give you some assistance if you have a personal problem. Yeah, very good point about uh, take what you want and leave the rest, because I've had clients who have been in AA and REBT, and they use a few things from AA and a few things from uh, REBT, and they're able to combine that. <clears throat> yeah. Now, now having, yeah, go on, Mick. I was going to say, having said that, I do have uh, many contentions with AA. Yeah, let's move on to that. So, do you want to start with that, Mick? Yeah, I can say this: the idea of God is, I think, silly. But they say God is anything you want it to be. And I have a friend who's an atheist, and he uses the group, the, the AA meeting is God for him. It's a power greater than him. But I don't think that we need to look upon a power greater than ourselves to help ourselves. In fact, we have all the power within ourselves to find our stinking thinking and correct our stinking thinking. I often get help from you or other friends about it, but the help is really coming from me and my own rat capability of being rational. Yeah, yeah, good point. And that 
relates to the first step. Alcohol has, AA has 12 steps. And the first step is we admitted we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives have had become unmanageable. And just as you're saying, if we drink, we have the power to drink. The alcohol isn't knocking us down and pour, pouring itself down our throat. So we have that power. We're just using the power we have in a self-defeating way. And the way to change that is by look at your thinking. Don't look for God. God's not going to help you with this, I'm afraid. But look at your thinking that's causing your drinking and change that. Yeah, Mick? And I was going to say, my father didn't attend AA meetings. He had a, he went to a, um, a rehab place and he had friends that went to the rehab place and they had a meeting for him because he didn't like all the God stuff with AA. But the way he put it to me, he, he abstained from drinking and he said an alcoholic is responsible for the first drink. I think we would to find something we'd agree with. If you're going to do REBT, it's best that you do it under so a sober experience. I don't think we would advocate anybody having three drinks and then trying to do an REBT exercise. Exactly, yeah. yeah and, my, uh, father, my father said an alcoholic is responsible for the first drink. So even saying that, you're not powerless over alcohol, you can refrain from the first drink. Yeah, and that reminds me of another problem with the way AA looks at things, and that is they look at people who have a drinking problem as alcoholics. And in REBT, we're much more nuanced than that. And we see someone who has a drinking problem as an imperfect human who acts imperfectly and compulsively drinks to their detriment. We don't define them, their essence, as an alcoholic. That yeah. doesn't exist. Yep. And I was going to say, for the first year of my father's sobriety, he took an abuse, which is a drug that if you drink when you take an abuse, you'll become violently sick. And every morning he would just take his an abuse pill knowing he couldn't drink for that day. So that was just a, a very practical approach he had to assure himself of not drinking. Yeah, yeah. And another practical approach is taking naltrexone which with many people kills their appetite for alcohol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, other points of contention, let me think of one. Well, with REBT, we do get all about your thinking and uh, it's something you can apply to any mental disturbance. Whereas I know AA does address people that have mental disturbances the primary uh the primary reason for going is to not drink and i've talked to people who go to a who said i've had days when i felt absolutely terrible and things were going wrong and i was responding badly and treating people badly but i didn't drink so it was considered a successful day whereas rebt would say are you living depression anxiety and anger free and if you're not, then look at those thoughts that are causing it and correct those thoughts. A successful day in REBT is being free of anxiety, depression, and anger. Or being less anxious, depressed, or, less anxious. or angry uh, also. So the, the more you improve, the better. Since you're an imperfect human, you, unlike Mick and I, but you... Uh, <laughs> you could get it down and you could decrease it. So yeah. work toward that. Another difference between uh, REBT and Alcoholics Anonymous is we suggest practical written exercises people can do to change their thinking, which I call three-minute exercises. And I discuss in my book, Three-Minute Therapy, Mick, you call it ABCs. And the reason you call it ABCs is because it starts with a, B, and C, which diagnoses the problem, your activating event, your irrational belief, and your emotional, or in this case, behavioral consequences. And then D, E, and F, which treats the irrational thinking by disputing, questioning, challenging your irrational beliefs and uh, coming to a more effective way of looking at things, which leads to more constructive behavior, less drinking or no drinking. Yeah, Mick. 
And I wanted to say another distinguishing difference between RABT and AA, although we've kind of mentioned this, but RABT says everybody is a fallible human being, to quote Albert Ellis and imitate him. I am nothing special. I am simply another fallible human being. I don't look on myself as special. I look on myself as typical, typically fallible. And AA, people who go to AA identify themselves as I am different than other people. I am alcoholic. Well, REBT would say, you're simply another fallible human being whose fallibility is manifested in the behavior of drinking too much booze. That's all you are. But other people make themselves depressed. Other people throw themselves into rages. Other people give themselves incessant anxiety. And it's even possible other people ruin REBT by saying, I must not be irrational. The most irrational thought you can have is I must be rational. And so we're all fallible human beings and not expecting myself to be infallible. I'm able to accept myself and be much less fallible. Yeah. Okay. And my last word is that the key to changing your thinking is practicing. Practice, 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 practice disputing, identifying your irrational beliefs, questioning them, and contradicting them again and again and again. Mick, did you have a last word here? I would just say, yeah, the key is practice, and the key is also recognizing the demand, as Albert Ellis said. If you are mentally disturbed, share Shayla should, share Shayla must. There is a demand there. Look for it. You can find it, identify it, and De reduce it to simply a desire. Whenever we have a desire, there's a possibility of a demand. A strong desire easily becomes a demand. That doesn't mean it has to. Life is fun with desires. Life is fun to want things. When we demand that we have them, then we disturb ourselves. So RBT does not say get rid of your desires. It says get rid of your demands. Keep your desires. They're fun. Even when you don't get them, it's fun to have a desire. Excellent. Very good. Very good. Uh, so I think we pretty much excavated the 12 steps, Alcoholics Anonymous. And in my book, I have uh, three-minute therapy. I have an entire chapter on drinking. So you could get more reinforcement there. Okay, thanks, Mick. For, yes? Just a quick have a last word. One thing I've seen when I talk about this with people in AA, many of them become very angry. You don't understand. I'm alcoholic. You don't understand. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get some people in the comment section that are very upset with us because of our viewpoint. Yep, yep. And it's really not because of our viewpoint. It's because of their musts and shoulds, what they're telling themselves about our viewpoint such as you must not criticize sacred Alcoholics Anonymous. Thank you for correcting me. As soon as those words left my mouth, I realized they were erroneous. Yeah, that's how friends help each other with REBT. <laughs> okay, so I'd like to uh, thank Chris Rossini, our tech engineer. Uh, thanks, Mick, our... Uh, our podcast partner, I'm Dr. Michael Edelstein, author of Three Minute Therapy, 3minutetherapy.com. Comment below if you have questions or disagreements, <laughs> and uh, give us a thumbs up, a like if you enjoyed this and learned from it. Suggest subjects that you'd like us to discuss in the future, or even better, volunteer, and we'll cure you of whatever problem you'd like to be cured of and subscribe to the Three Minute Therapy podcast to stay on the rational side of life.